All right, I am sat here with uh, Colin Nathan, uh, one of the team members of Boxing Five, and uh, I just want to get a recap and, uh, you know, obviously speak about the the tournament that passed this past weekend. Uh, what, what's your thoughts initially? Yeah, listen, I thought production was good. I thought the delivery was good. I mean, obviously, the main event ending in forty three seconds wasn't what anyone expected, but uh, just you know, the thing about the main event was Hickey was in with a guy in the ring who really didn't belong in the same ring as him. And what happened was he took care of business, you know, um, and he did what he was supposed to do. And that was dispatch of the guy in, in the opening round. I didn't think it would be a one punch KO. I didn't think it'd be in 43 seconds, but I'll take it. I'll take it. I think all the other fights, you know, Nokotoli is now proving that he's just world class. He's levels above some of these other guys. And I just think he is, just a phenomenal fighter. He's finally living up to his expectations. Head of Hormones had a, a, a really relatively easy fight in there just to kind of shake off the ring rust. And I thought uh, Smash Khadebi put in a good performance, good workmanlike performance. And, you know, Caden Tutor, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I think he's a star. He's going to be a star, special talent for South African African boxing. Yeah, he opened up the night. Um, I don't know if you can see on your screen right there, I pretty much brought up the bill and uh, what it was. There was five fights in the evening. Obviously, sadly, DJ Creel's fight has been postponed, not cancelled, postponed. So that's a, that's a positive uh, in that uh, in that sense. But uh, looking at the card here, good, good night for South African boxers. Yeah, I mean, listen, I expected at the press conference which you were at, I expected the South Africans to win, just not in such devastating fashion for the two gentlemen. But it is what it is. You know, now we ball towards the next event, which is June 10th, which 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 features uh, DJ Krill headlining um, due to the nature of what happened the last time with visa issues. And I'm just looking forward to a spectacular performance. And we already started to work on the undercard, which is it's going to be star studded. Um, so just looking forward to the next event. And obviously that as well. Um, also, Steven Nati Nonchinga and, and Lorato Lamini. Yeah, that's going to be on a, a separate bill as well that you're working on. Yeah. So that'll be a nice announcement that'll happen soon. Um, before I even get, because the other topic I wanted to talk to was about Leduma Lamati, but before I even uh, oh, yeah. before I even get there, <laughs> obviously that's a huge one. And uh, Larry Weinstein as well has got a, you know, he's helped Leduma along the way and uh, you've come on board now as well. But I mean, before I get to Leduma, of course, that, that's going to happen now. I just want to quickly go back to the Boxing Five bill. You know, I want to talk about what's next for for, for, for each of these boxes. You know, you got young Caden Troots. I wanted to start with him and uh, work our way up the bill as well, because Caden, as you said, he's uh, one of the top blue chip prospects for the country. Yeah, it really, really is. Um, just a lot's expected of him. You know, I think we're going to move him up now to eight rounds and, and obviously see how he fares at eight rounds. I'd like to step him up. There are a couple of names that I've thrown to Shannon and Sean that we're discussing um, that I feel that that's the right fight for him right now. But we'll we'll see what the next step is. Um, probably get him out again in July, August. And then I think by the end of the year, we'll, we'll get him fighting for, for either a youth championship or, or an African championship. Um, I think his star quality, as I've said before, and I think he's one of the guys that becomes very important for Boxing 5 going forward. And then um, looking at the next one, head of Volmerans, obviously moving up to the welterweight division. I've seen on BoxRec, she's already number three in the welterweight division in the world. I mean, Sandy Ryan is right next to her. I mean, there's there's some options there. Yeah, so Jessica, Jessica McCaskill, Sandy Ryan, and then it's Hedda. So I've already been in conversation with Matchroom. Sandy Ryan's obviously chasing the McCaskill fights. And if that doesn't materialize, we're ready. Like I've, I've sent I've sent correspondence to, we, we're ready. We're ready to do that fight. Um, but also we're planning on doing header in August for Women's Month, potentially as a feature um, and maybe for a secondary IBF title. Uh, been in touch with the IBF on that. Otherwise, Sandy Ryan wants an opponent. We're ready to, we're ready to smash her. And, and I, I'm not even joking. I'm not even bullshitting yeah. you. Like, we're ready. Uh, we need a test header. We need to see how good she is. Um, you know, this last Saturday, it just kind of shook off the, the ring rust and got in there and knocked her opponent out with a body shot. What a great body shot. You could mm -hmm. just see all the stuffing on the door just coming out with that shot. Um, but again, you know, we need to see how good she is. And if the opportunity presents itself to Sandy Ryan, we'll take it for the WBO. We'll you know, I, I haven't seen Hedda with that much energy in a long time as well. And I'm not wondering if the weight cuts was too much for her in the past. Yeah, she's definitely in the recent stronger. Part. I mean, she said to me in the dressing room after the contest that, she was really feeling comfortable as a welterweight and, and she feels good and strong. 
And even Scott McIntosh said to me, listen, Carl, this is the right move. So I'm all for it. Expect it to be rated now in the, in the various sanctioning bodies at welterweight going forward. And again, you know, like we, we get an opportunity to fight Sandy Wright. I'm keen. If not, we're going to do a keep busy fight, maybe for a secondary uh, championship in August and, and potentially the IBF, as I, as I mentioned. All right. And then moving up the ball, I know that you don't represent this particular fighter, but she looked she looked good on the night was Simon Gilles smash a day bench. She's obviously another great representation uh, for female boxing in the country. Yeah, solid workmanlike performance from her. Um, like I'm saying, I think borderline fringe uh, world title, world championship, world title contendership now. And, and I don't know what the next step is with her. I mean, it's a discussion that, uh, you know, Colleen might have to have with Boxing 5. But I think the world of her ability, as you know, she's a really, really sweet, talented fighter and great storyline. And I, and I believe she might be unbeaten as a flyweight, ABU champion. Um, let's see what's next for her. 100%. Obviously, she 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 was the the fighter that went to points on the evening and uh, was able to. Well, the, the opponent that she fought ne has never been stopped before, so it was always going to be a, a mountainous task anyway. But uh, that's where that's Simon Gill in a nutshell, just pure boxing skills. Anyway, moving on to the next one was uh, Siko Sequence. He's a very exciting boxer. Obviously, you you started helping out with his career as well with his trainer Pumzile at the helm, and obviously Larry Weinstein of Boxing Five representing him. He looked good on the nights. I mean, he actually looked just as good as some of the other fighters on the nights. I mean, a word for him? Yeah, so he's number 12 in the WBA. Obviously, now we're going to try and look to push him into the top 10. Um, just, you know, like I said, you know, when he started out, I looked at him and I was thinking, this kid's definitely like a world champion, you know, in waiting. And then kind of lost his way with uh, the losses with Sibel uh, and Gibiani. But he's rebounded and come back beautifully with Pumzini Machila. And, you know, now built himself into a, a position where he's legitimately world class. So obviously keep him active. The chances are we're probably going to do a global defense, WB a global defense in these next fights. Um, and then keep, keep working the ratings and get him into contention for world title shots. Yeah, so he's got exciting times ahead of him as well. This is a nice one again, uh, beating up on 10 wins and two losses. First time fighting a guy from Thailand as well, which is exciting. And that also happened uh, in the main events of the evening, which was Heki Budla. I know that's your your most prized possession you've ever had and probably South Africa's greatest ever boxer. Heki Budla, a moment to save you. A knockout after a very long time. First round knockout, have you? Uh, what did you think about his fight? Well, I was obviously expecting a win, and we, we were expecting to wear the guy down, like kind of midway through with body shots. And then Hecky just, you know, touched the shot downstairs. You could see the guy wins, and then he swiveled up on the 45 degree angle left hook. And I was like, I know on social media there was like comparisons with Hecky's shot with Caleb Plant's shot with Durrell, and that hit the socials, and that was pretty impressive. Um, you know what? It's like people are saying, am I disappointed? I'm not because he went through a camp, made, made weights, even though it was a pound, a, a catch weight above 108. And, and he got in and he took care of the business. So he's he shook it off. You know, he shook off the, the ring rust. Um, he was out since June or July last year. And now we start getting ready for August for Kinshura. I mean, obviously, that's that's the one we, we targeting in Japan. And that's the one we focused on right now. So I was very impressed that he took care of business like an absolute professional I like this version of Hecky. Um, pacing his shots well, good core, very sitting on his shots a little bit more, um, and always been able to follow a game plan. And even in Mexico, when he beat the odds against Alan Soto, his legs were so, so good. And I've got a big a big shout out to Scott McIntosh, who's strength and conditioning coach, who's worked wonders with Hecky and Hedda. Um, and he works with various other athletes in our gym. Just, you know, Hecky's just an absolute credit. And, and defensively, timing wise, I see no slowing down. In fact, I like this version of Hecky Bada. This is probably the best version I've ever seen. And, you know, working with him in this camp and catching bits of him leading up to this contest, I was just like, I was just blown away by his professionalism. Even now, always has been, but even now, the, the, the final stage of his career, like, I'm just blown away. This is the final stage of his career, but I think he's looked a lot better now than he has even in patches in his career. I think that uh, Hecky's definitely no, looking more fun. And, and I also think this version of Hecky Butler would have beaten the early version and even the middle version of Hecky. I, I just honestly, I like what I see in the gym. You know, I, I just see the hand-eye coordination. I see the foot movement. The just and also you can't buy experience. He's just got so much experience. You know, turning in with shots, stepping in, shortening up his range. You know, extending his range. I'm just, I'm blown away by the professionalism and just the way he's adapted throughout the years 
as as the ultimate professional in hockey. I really am. And I mean, a WBC, WBA, and Ring magazine. That's next. I mean, no matter how we slice it and dice it, that that's what's up next. It's a it's a real challenge. Kenshiro Taraji. Does this is this the hardest fighter fight of Heki's career? You know, in a total package, or you know, has he fought someone that's perhaps more monumental in his career, but we just haven't realized it? I suppose we can only analyze that when when he's retired from boxing. But this is obviously one of those fights right up there that's that's really really difficult. It's a massive challenge for all of us, but it's a challenge that I relish, and it's a challenge that I believe that we'll overcome and succeed in. I want these kind of challenges for myself as a trainer, as a manager, um, and every fighter wants to test themselves to be the best in the world. So I relish this opportunity. We're going to take it with his his pair of hands, my pair of hands, Shannon's pair of hands. Benny will probably be there as well. So and South Africa, this is just a great moment for South African boxing, and I think this is Hecky's time. And I still think he's exceptionally fresh, and I believe that we've got the right formula the right style to create an upset and become champion of the world again. I mean, you know, you've been on the road with Heki before. He's cool, calm and collected. Nothing really phases him in terms of the international. A lot of people freeze on the international stage and he's not one of those guys. And I think that's a testament of his value in the world. Correct. And also experience and, and his mental resolve and, and the fact that he trusts his corner and team. So absolutely. I like the fact that the chips are stacked against us. And again, you know, like I've always said it before, and I'm going to say it again to you, is like I love upsetting the odds. So we're ready to upset the odds, and we're ready to take the world by storm in August. All right, let's talk about, let's keep on the topic of upsetting the, the odds. Uh, Laduma Lamati's fight is also seen as a fight that could be upsetting the odds. It certainly, it certainly seems that way, according to the British media, who are backing Nick Ball full steam ahead. Uh, what's your thoughts on that fight uh, taking part, uh, place in Belfast? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the odds are stacked against Leduma and, and, and Boxing 5 and the team and Pumzili, but we know what we're up against. But here's the thing, Hayden, is that we need to know how good Leduma actually is. He needs to make the step and take the step as well. So I believe that the step comes at the perfect moment. I think stylistically he's got a real good chance of upsetting the odds against Paul. Paul's a very square, front foot, aggressive kind of fighter, very strong. But a guy like Ledumo, who is just very calculating down the middle, could could really, really produce an upset. So looking very forward to this opportunity for Ledumo. Um, and I believe it comes at the perfect time. And, and again, if he wins, or rather when he wins, we're in line to fight for the world title. We're fighting on the under, undercard of Conan and Lopez. So obviously that, the main support by being us, well, all eyes will be on that too. I mean, that puts South African boxing in a really good space. Should Leduma get the win? Should Heki get the win? Uh, we almost backed up to having these big names uh, lur lurking around the South African boxing scene again. It's just only Nonshinga at the moment that's sort of representing the country. Is it worrying times in, in that aspect? Um, yes and no. I, I mean, I believe a lot of the fighters who are active in South Africa uh, are really legitimately world class. I just don't think that the promoters actually believe in them enough or are prepared to pay or take a sacrifice or take a risk. You've got to take risks in the sport because you can get your fights at 100 and 0 fighting at a certain venue and, and fighting for, for a minor championship. I mean, it is what it is. I've been there. I've done that. Um, you know, some world titles are bigger than others. I admit that. You admit that. Boxing people know that. Mm -hmm. But you've got to take risks and you've got to take gambles in boxing and life because if you don't, you're never going to know. I mean, I'd rather have a fighter step up and, and end, up, end up losing as opposed to him being um, a secondary belt holder and having a record of 55 and 0. You know, what's the point? You want Fighters want to test themselves. Trainers want to test themselves. Ma managers want to test themselves. And, and surely, surely promoters out there need to test themselves as well. Well, I think you don't get respected worldwide unless you do that as well. I mean, people, you know, it's all nice and well to be kept in a nice little circle. But I mean, you want to be you want to be noticed worldwide and being made a big deal about worldwide anyway. So that's where the whole argument where, where it comes to like major world championship comes to is just, you know, are you the best in the world in your weight division? You know, that's that's the that's the argument. And one of those one of those things is for Heki is beat Taraji. There's no argument. He's literally the unified champion of the world. Correct. And, you know, like we could we could win a secondary belt tomorrow or minor championship tomorrow. But what's the point? We want we want legacy. We want legacy. Steven Aitin Nonchenga, legitimate world champion. You understand what I'm saying? So if you if you compare apples with apples, let's call a spade a spade. It is what it is. 
You know, you, you can't escape from the legitimacy of, of world championships. You can't. No, you can't. And uh, yeah, so Steven Nassi and Shinga, Lorato, Glamini, there'll be news coming out for them in the not just distant future. I think if you're following social media, you kind of know what's happening with uh, Steven Nassi and Shinga. It's all over Twitter, all over Facebook. He's really, he's really a buzz and he's going to create another buzz when he gets back in that ring. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. He's really looking the part. Sparring's going really well. Camp's going well. We're obviously going to like, obviously spice it up in the next couple of weeks in terms of hard training and stuff. But he's really shaping up. His weight's good. He's got excellent sparring in the gym. And I'm just looking forward to a world-class, world championship defense performance from Sivinati Nonchenka. And of course, Lorato Glamini is flying under the radar as he usually does throughout his whole career, he usually likes to fly under the radar and make a big statement on the big stage. Is uh, is he set to have a good comeback? Yeah, we, we're obviously finalizing the opponent now, but I mean, you know, like I still think he's world class. I still get him in contention to fight for something major and big in, in, in the future. And I still think the world of his ability came within a whisker, whisper of, of beating uh, Jazz Dickens, a very close decision. Anywhere else, maybe we could have nicked it. I thought we won, but hey, it's one of those things. It's it's like I really don't think Lorato's stock dropped at all. In fact, if anything, he proved that he can operate at a world class level, and he's a world class featherweight. So I'm very happy with it. His performance against Jazz, and I, I think still the world of his ability to go forward and, and win a championship. If anything, it might get him in a nice big fight in the future. People might underestimate him, or you know, something of the contrary. But he is quality. He's always been good. I mean, winning the WBC silver, the same title that Duma Lamati is now fighting for. So you've been there and done that before. Um, this one feels like this one feels like a big one, like a really, really big one. So if Laduma gets this, he could almost be fighting for a world title straight after that. Well, exactly, exactly the point. I mean, when when we went to Saudi with Lorato, he wasn't supposed to be penalizer, and he absolutely. He creamed and dropped him twice and won a massive unanimous decision. So I, I fancy the Dumas chances. Um, and I really, really think that this is his time. He has to step up. We need to see how good he is. And I think the moment's right for this for this opportunity for the Dumas. All right. And then another win that you came back. We haven't actually spoken on camera in a while because I just noticed there's a lot of topics that actually have I happened in the time being. I said to you, I thought you were maybe being sensitive about something. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, let's talk about Alfred Lamptey, right? He's the new yeah. Ghanaian superstar coming out of your gym, and he he dismantled Nathaniel Kakalolo, dropping him twice towards it. Could have potentially stopped him towards the end of his fight. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, he's only 20 years old, went to 12 and 0 with eight KOs. It was kind of the performance I expected from him. Uh, really, really young, hard, strong fighter, very aggressive on the front foot, beautiful jab, really starting to develop his boxing skills now. The plan now is for us to get him a work permit here for a year to bring him out here so he can start camping properly at the gym and then obviously bring him along. We're looking at bringing him out again. I actually got a, ma a message yesterday for July, August for, for secondary RBF belts. So looking at moving him along and getting him obviously in contention down the line to fight for a legitimate world championship as well. But his talent is really good. He's got a very strong work ethic. He's, his timing on his shots are really good. He places his shots really well. Um, still a little raw, needs to move his head and become, you know, a little bit more smooth and fluid with his with his rhythm and style. But that's going to come with time. And I mean, at the age of 20, he boxed out of his skin against uh, Nathaniel. And I was very impressed with that performance. Really, really was. So obviously, the with, with not just him camping here, but him also fighting in South Africa as well. I think the South African fans are eager and uh, are waiting to see a, a new talent coming through as well. Yeah, so we've already been in conversation. Uh, we've already been in conversation about bringing him out and learning in box for boxing five. I think that might be a good a good position to be in. But obviously, we need to follow up on those conversations and see what's next. And obviously, the, the first thing is to get the work permit sorted out. And once we've got that sorted, we can start looking at scheduling him. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe after August, we can do maybe one fight here towards the end of the year and, and feature him. Any, any particular fights you're looking at here in South Africa? What would be a good local fight for Alfred? Um, Asanda Gingi, but uh, he's number one now. Um, I don't think his promotion would, would want that fight. Um, but let's see, you know, it's, it's business at the end of the day, and let, let's see. But I, I'd like that fight to happen, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm not sure that Gingi's uh, camp would approve that. All right, interesting times ahead. Obviously, nice storylines to be to be happening. Cole, anything lastly that you that you want to leave us with? Just great seeing you, even albeit from a laptop. It's always good hearing your voice and seeing you. And just shot. Thanks for the platform, bro. We'll chat soon. Yeah.